I don't know who you are, but welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast. Sit back, relax, and listen about cameras, gear, settings, stories, and all things photography. Join Dermot and Darren on Ireland's Best Photography Podcast. Let's go. And you're very welcome to episode 82 of the Irish Photography Podcast. And I'm joined with my co-host down the whole way down in Cork, as per usual, Darren Jedi Spoonie. How are you, Darren? You keeping well, pal? Good. Yeah, very good, actually. Yeah, very How good. Had a very good week. Really enjoyed the last podcast that we did, actually, with the video podcast on that. So it was great fun. Yeah. So yeah. how about you? How are you getting on? I'm doing really well now. I'm fucking had a great week considering and um, looking forward to next week as well. So I've got a lovely few new toys just getting ready for our trip to the Dolomites. And, uh, a few? Yeah, yeah, just a few. But uh, I to pick up with a few other things as well. So I think I'm nearly ready. Are you nearly ready for it? I'm ready in here, yeah. I'm excited, you know. Um, but I suppose, look, I can kind of really get things ready in the end of it because I have everything that I need already, so I don't need to go off and get stuff. The only thing I need to get, actually, I don't even think I need to get them, but I might want to get them just in case are okay. gloves. What type of gloves? I was looking at different types of gloves. So, you know, there's ones that you can get that have Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof. You've got ones that have a, a tip that you can go in the front that you can use your phone. Um, you can get tin gloves, you can get thick gloves, you can get skiing gloves. There's a number of different types of gloves that you can get. But what I'm looking for is something somewhere in the middle. So something that's not going to be too cumbersome, mm. something that's going to allow me to be able to use the phone if I do need to phone. It's not going to get wet because we're going to be in snow. I don't want the ones that's going to hold moisture. Um, I don't really, I can't, I don't know how I can't though, like because looking at the price of them, the Valorette gloves, I mean, you yeah. can't really justify spending 89 euros. So why don't you reach out to Mark O'Brien and see what he thinks of the gloves? Mark O'Brien is worse than you, man. Mark O'Brien would say, oh, they're the best things ever. He's, got, the, he's got more worse gear than you, or gas than you. <laughs> <laughs> they were on offer, I think, to Mark went, oh, they're on sure? offer, yeah, they're down to 69 euros. No, okay, Whoa. grand, they were down from 89 to 69, which is 20 quid off. But still, like, I mean, it's a lot yeah. of money for a pair of gloves, you know? Okay. Yeah, now I remember we did a podcast with Sean and yep. Mark down in Kerry, which is absolutely amazing podcast. If you haven't heard it, please go back. We had such a great time that weekend. But was it true, or were you, were you were you just joking that he's like a selection of rab jackets <laughs> at home? Are we just taking a mix? No, Mark has a, nearly every single color of a rab jacket that's available. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're messing. You have well, to be messing. Okay, up. Mark, you'd have to. You know, t- take up the challenge and let us know how many rab jackets do you have and what different colours do you have? Because you do have a few rab jackets, yeah. He has a lovely orange one now that he wore. And uh, truth be known, I have a video releasing today, the same day as the podcast, and uh, Mark O'Brien features for 0.2 of a second with that oh, yeah? rab jacket. <laughs> and he does, he does this kind of Dad oh, thing yes, down, yeah, yeah. We down in uh, Ladies, Ladies View. Which yeah, oh, yeah. is slept that off. That was a great day. Uh, at Ladies View. That was funny, actually. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. That was good. So, anyway, look, I'm hosting tonight, and normally when I'm on the chair of the host and vice versa with you, that we usually kind of pick the topics that we want to talk about. Yeah. But I thought it was very interesting that you came up with this idea, and I want you to run with that and you tip, uh, pick the first topic for tonight, even though you're not hosting, but I'm going to. Pass it over to you, buddy. What is it? Well, we were trying to find a topic for this evening, and I was thinking, okay, you know, what would be an interesting one? And I, I always search, like you, news stories on photography and such. And, you know, in recent times, there was a, a couple of incidents in weather phenomena that happened, and they were obviously being shown in the news and stuff like that. But I found one article on Petapixel, which I found was fantastic, was a photographer who decided to travel 60 kilometers in the opposite direction of everybody else when... The floods happened in um, Venice, right? So she went there because she figured, you know what? I'm going to go to this spot because there's going to be photographs here to take in beautiful locations, but with conditions that are not normally going to be there. And it got me thinking in regards to the topic to discuss this evening is, have you had situations that are a situation where you've had weather conditions that gave you an opportunity to get a photograph and you saw the weather conditions and you said, you know what, 
I'm going to go because I do think that there's going to be something different here, something unique, not something that anybody else can get, purely because of the weather conditions that were happening. So for that photographer, when she went to Venice, she got some great shots, all the main photography areas, but now with this bed of water underneath it. So you get some crazy reflections, as you can imagine as well. Hmm. It's very interesting. Uh, first and foremost, she's a bit mad in the head to go the opposite direction than everyone else is. But you know, I think that's just for t- the photographer and all of us. I think you would do the I same would, yeah. and so would yeah. I. But we would be at wit's end at the same time. We would, like, we're not total idiots. We know what we're doing and we can read the weather. We know when we're in a dangerous spot or not. So I'm sure she was safe to that point of view. Uh, as for the photographs, I'm sure for, sure of it. She got some very, very interesting shots, and I can't wait to actually read or see the article because I'd say it will just blow me away. I'm not one that's in love with Venice, but I was I said the same thing about the Aurora Borealis, and then I went and I visited, and I thought it was one of the most amazing, spectacular things that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, I so knew that was going to happen. Would Venice be the same to me? You know, I really don't know, but. I do see these pictures online and even one of them got into an into the Irish photography podcast photographer of the year award. And I thought it was a very, very interesting picture. Really liked it. However, the top part of it was just empty negative space. And that's what kind of let me down on that picture. But like the bottom half, of it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Mm-hmm. Top half, just, just, just let it down for me. But, mm-hmm. uh, but interesting location nonetheless. And uh, somewhere there I would love to uh, visit someday. Uh, but anyway, we're getting off the beaten track. Would I go and put myself in that position? I most certainly would. I would have no problem doing it. And truth be known, I went to Kilkey and I'm a frequent visitor down there anyway yeah. because I do a lot of scuba diving, kayaking, fishing, anything to do with water. I'm I'm usually kind of there, you know. So, there was a red weather warning alert for the west coast of Ireland. So, Galway, Kerry and Clare re- were really getting battered, especially Kerry, to be fair. Mm-hmm. So, I made my way up to Kilkee and myself and my buddy, I was actually in college at the time, myself and my buddy, David Woodland, we took a trip down, took the day off college, but they were totally understanding because I told them I was going for photographic reasons. Yeah, that was handy, and I was yeah. a photo- photography student, so I got away yeah, with that it. that was handy. <laughs> you know, so... And we went off, and we went up towards what's called the Samaritan... Well, I call it the Samaritan's Hut. It's a white painted hut, hut up uh, the Dunlicky Walk. Yes. And you're sheltered from rain, sleet, snow, whatever. And then in the distance, then you have what's called George's Head. And it's an absolute gem of a place to do a scuba dive right underneath it but it can be very treacherous Mm -hmm. when it wants to be any bit of bad weather and you are goosed if you're in the water so i don't know what kilometer the winds were but the waves were just literally beating up against george's head and smashing it now george's head is give or take 100 feet, 120 feet. And when the waves were crashing up against George's head, they were going about 150 feet above George's head. Wow. So that they were just so aggressive, so violent. But like we brunt all the weather. We kept on going where we wanted to go. We set up our tripods and we just kept on banging off shot after banging off shot and then hoping to get the right shot. And I did. I got a very, very good shot. Now, my gear was slightly lacking, but it's not always all about the gear. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought it's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> it's not all about the gear. Hang on a second. Is this a New it's Year's resolution? It's not always all about you? the gear. <laughs> it is and it isn't. But uh, I had a 70 to 300 uh, lens. It wasn't even in any way professional. It was just a standard stock kit lens that you would get. Yes. Uh, cheapest chips I'd say I paid about 100 euros for it while I was in college I had a Canon 450D I think it was my first ever camera and we just kept on shooting away and we were so happy man we had so much fun we got battered we were soaked to the bone but it was so worth it that day and we weren't ever really in harm's length because you know we have heads in us we are some bit intelligent so we were actually quite safe, but would I do it all over again? Absolutely, man. I, I just love the thrill of it all anyway, because whether you're safe or not, there's always that kind of 
that anxiety that something could happen or you're thrill seeking, you're on the edge of your seat all the time, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. And even if you look at the example though from in Venice, you know, okay, that was flooding. So it was slightly different. It wasn't as dangerous, but it was going to give a present a condition that wouldn't normally be there. So you're going out to go for the um, photograph on George's head. And is that, by the way, that Samaritan's hut, that's where you hid and took the photograph when we had our challenge that time, wasn't it? That is absolutely correct. Yeah. So Nice spot. That was one of the times that you've gone back trying to recreate that shot, obviously, then as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been back there five, six, seven, eight, ten times. I went back there with John Myler uh, about two years ago, and we had an orange weather alert. The two of us went down, and we're like, yeah, we're definitely going to get this shot. We're definitely getting it. No, I, can, I cannot get a good a shot. And, like, I have gear that is... Ten times better than I have back then. I have spent stupid amounts of money on gear. I have spent stupid amount of money on my education and my knowledge of photography and hours and countless hours of teach myself and trying to get better photography and still I cannot better that shot that I took about five or six, seven years ago. No, it's about six years but ago. That's because the conditions aren't the same, yeah? I mean the conditions are what make the photograph. Yeah. Uh, yeah, couldn't could it's like whoever creates the weather or whoever creates the light that that's what matters and we can't do that. We, can't. we can only adapt to our surroundings. We can only adapt to what's in front of us and kind of uh, manipulate it to a certain degree. But we can't make it have gale force winds and can't have a hundred and three hundred foot waves or whatever you know, crashing up against the rocks. You know that's the that's up to whoever makes those things and I don't make them, you know? Yeah, but you see, the point is that is when you do know that it's happening, you know, it, it's quite dangerous, of course, and I wouldn't really be an advocate of saying, oh, you know, get an orange weather warning, okay, go to the coast. You have to be careful, of course, because you're at the mercy of nature. But at the same point, it's when you go there to get that photograph is when you get the uniqueness, again, like I say, of that shot and you're, you're chasing it, but you can't control it. You can never, you, you could have, Nine out of the ten things that you think would be for the perfect photo, and the light may be in the wrong place, there could be clouds in the wrong place, there could be the waves breaking in the wrong place, it could be anything. The wind could be going in the wrong place and make it impossible for you to take the photograph with the amount of spray that's coming in. Yeah, I thought John was actually going to freak out that day because uh, he was on his belly. He, he like we were getting blown over. He got a, a, a beautiful shot of me trying to vlog in that that's weather. That's still your cover Which, photo, isn't it? Something. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And like, I I vlogged the whole day and and somehow, do you remember you said to me, oh, did you vlog? And I was like, I did, yeah. I did, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. It it went missing. I don't know where it went to. It's Disaster. Like, I've looked tirelessly on old hard drives and I cannot Disaster. find it. I mean, like, no, the, the footage is on a GoPro tree. It's not going to be Still? super good. I didn't know, really know what I was doing back then either. Oh, so gear does matter now. So just, is that you're going back to now again, is it? <laughs> gear doesn't matter but nah, I was on a GoPro 3 really it does kind of matter like. yeah yeah but uh, look it's a bit of both really but j- going back to John like he, he was down in his belly because he was going to get blown over and uh, he was trying to take photographs and the spree sp- uh, sea spray was just literally flying up <laughs> onto the lens so basically you to hide yes. wait for the right second and then have your camera tucked in in your jacket and then whip it up and take your picture and and then put it back in again because you were just getting destroyed. Yeah. But it was a really enjoyable day. I, I love going out doing these things. But, like, again, uh, you're putting your gear at risk. You're putting yourself at risk in a <laughs> weird way. But, look, if you're smart about it, I think it's grand. If there's a red, red or weather <laughs> alert tomorrow, I would pack my bags and I would go out there. And, and like, would you? Yeah, I, well, um, it depends. Uh, I would look at the conditions i would look and say okay you know what i don't really want to put myself or anybody else at risk trying to save me but if there's an orange or a yellow weather alert more so i go okay we'll get some nice conditions here you know i mean look we're at the wild atlantic way you think in regards to the conditions that we have that you and i should be getting photographs like nick page is getting there in disappointment beach mm. you know i mean like you, you we've got phenomenal waves we've got phenomenal coastal areas but you have to have the conditions right to enable you to get that. So if you've got a big storm that's coming through, okay, it's not really going to be the greatest to take photographs because it's going to be pelting rain. But if you've got heavy winds that are coming through, that's going to whip up the sea enough. It doesn't have to be too bad to get the shot that you want to get. you know what I mean? Yeah. And like you say there about the, you know, bad weathers and stuff like that. Like for me, 
what made me think then from my own photo is that there was uh, I can't remember what was the hurricane that came through Ireland was it Hurricane Lorenzo or something like that uh, uh, Ophelia Ophelia yeah. that's it yeah so Hurricane Ophelia came through and it came through the country as everybody knows and you know it started out in the southwest and it got you know increasingly I suppose calmer by the time it got up to the east but along the way it did some good damage and what it did was a quite unique thing is that it went through Clonmel. Mm. So in Clonmel, you have showerings which produce bulmers or magners, as it's called in the in English. Chateau de Clonmel. And Chateau de Clonmel, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the hurricane came through, and it was in autumn, end of autumn. So the trees were laden with apples. So the hurricane came through and just knocked every single apple off the trees. That's class. So I remember, like you know, thinking, okay, yeah, she's just going to do a bit of damage, like. But then two days later. We had another end of that, which was a big oh, that's right. uh, storm. Yeah. So there was a huge amount of water then as well that followed through. So the River Shore burst its banks and it went in over one of the uh, orchards and it picked up every single apple and washed every single apple down to the end of the field. Wow. And, and I, I, how I first saw it was pictures started appearing on MLP, Monster Landscape Photographers. And I went, wow, man, gee, look at that. So I said to myself, you know what, i got to go up there. So there's one of the guys in the group in Monster Landscape, Mark Dillon, and I contacted him and said, Mark, do you know what that field is? He goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, he says, I'll take you up to it. I said, okay, perfect. I want to get up there for some reason for dawn. Don't know why, but I said, I'm going to get up there for dawn. And when I uh, arrived and met Mark, <laughs> he brought me up to these big fields at the back end of Clanmel. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm on the top of a hill here. Like, it can't really be here because the water is what's after yeah. doing all the flooding. And it was pitch dark. So I'm thinking, okay, sure. Like, right, Mark, cheers, man. Thanks. He was going off to work. So he drops me off in this field <laughs> in the pitch dark. And I'm walking around. It's, it's, it's the Bulmer's field. So it wasn't anybody's ordinary field. But I'm walking around these fields in the pitch dark, laden with my camera gear, <laughs> looking for this load of fictitious apples that are going to be Fictitious the apples. Yeah. I, I was like, hang on, this can't be real. You know? So <laughs> I then left that field and it started to become dawn. I saw another field across. And I went, cry out. The size of these, these fields, you, could, you couldn't see the end of these fields. Mm. They were just so long. And orchards of apples, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm never going to find this. And then it was starting to become dawn, obviously. And I noticed that there was a fog. And I was like, okay, hang on a second, man. I have to find this place. So I started driving around looking. And I was like, I can't find it. I couldn't make, make contact with Mark because he'd gone to work. And I said, you know what? He's good enough to meet me early in the morning. I'll leave him alone. I'll find it myself. Mm. So I said, you know what? Here's the best way to do it. So it became around 9 o'clock at this point. Anyway, so I picked up the, the phone and I rang... Um, Bulmers, and I said, hi, yes, I'm <laughs> nice. your photographer, I'm in the area, is there any way that I can tell me where that field is for where all the apples and stuff had fallen? And uh, the lady, in fairness, she was very nice, she's like, look, I don't know if you can go down there. She goes, look, there'll be a guy in there, he's head of operations, he'd been a half nine. I said, okay. I said, um, I'll give him a call back then. I said, sure, no problem. So I rang back a half nine, and uh, he said, yeah, I should pop in there to me. So I popped in, and in fairness, he took me down to where the field was. Wow. Well. And it was mad. And like, this is what I'm saying about conditions that are never going to be repeated. Okay, when I say never, I mean, look, it could take a heavy wind that might knock off those apples again. But, you know, for the two combination to come together. Um, and I did see that something similar actually had happened only this year, but not to the same extent as what had happened in uh, with Hurricane Ophelia. So I got a photograph at the end of autumn in the Clonmel Orchards of all the apples, basically, all lining the floor. And the, the patterns that they made is incredible. But one of my favorite ones is that if you can imagine the, the, the water coming in, catching every single apple and dumping it at the end of the field, right? Coming back up from that is where you're going to have the last bits of water. So it was like a stream of the apples going down into the big pond of apples. So I went to the top of that and took one photograph and I just placed the camera right down and you've got a stream of apples that are kind of winding up to the trees that have no apples left on them and you can see in the distance the carpet of red and green apples and then you've got a lovely fog as well going over the top of it but again I was delighted that I managed to push myself to get that um, photograph I got a number of photographs and um, you know I've got a couple that have been printed as well they came Mm. out pretty cool yeah so like it's 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 cool to kind of get something different and unique because of unique weather conditions you know yeah, yeah. And tell me this, did uh, did you give Bulmers a copy or send it on to them or anything like that? I did. And I did. Wh- I actually happened? took a picture of, I took a picture of the guy uh, who brought me down there in the middle of all of it. because uh, he'd never had that picture again. So I yeah. took that picture and I sent it off to him. Yeah. Ah, oh, fair play to you, boy. You're a gent. 
That's a fake. You know that, that, he was song. He was song to bring me down. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I saw the picture there. It's it was unreal, man. I absolutely loved it. And being a green eyed, envious monster, I really was when I saw it. And I was like, yeah, I am dead jealous of that. I really wanted to go. It. But do you know what? If I went up and took that picture, I just wouldn't feel comfortable because you had it already. I'd just be a copycat. Like, but no, I just. If it does happen again, I don't care. Though. That goes all out the window and I'm going to go get it myself because my morals have gone out the window. We missed stage. it anyway. It, it kind of ha- it happened there a couple of months back. Did um, not, but did not again like, to the same extent. But Ugh. yeah, it did, yeah, but not to the same extent, you know. So, I mean, like from a weather conditions point of view, I think it's great to be able to look out for them and to go to places that you're going to get mm. a, a photograph that wouldn't normally be there. And you're like a simple one, actually, what you think of is you see it a lot now. We've discussed it in the last number of months and weeks guys who were taking cityscape photographs it's in the rain mm. it's after the rain so you get the reflections so you get yeah. a reflection that wouldn't normally be there because a puddle isn't always there isn't uh jasper very good at doing all that kind of crack very good very mm. good you know and like you just think about you know what what as from our listeners point of view i suppose really dermot you know like has anybody had those situations you know would they share the shot that they've got i suppose you know have they got situations where they've wished they could have gone somewhere and they couldn't gone they're just like you saying okay you'd like to get that photograph of the clamel uh, mm. orchards but there'll be other areas as well that you go you know actually you know i'm still going to go there i'm still going to take those photographs um cork city flooded in 2008 or nine i think nine or something like that um and the whole center of the city was like mirror like a glass and you would have got some phenomenal photographs there that you wouldn't see hopefully i mean Okay, Cork is going to be susceptible to um, flooding, but you're not going to get to the same extent, you know. And I think it's very interesting just to think about the weather conditions, but what sort of photograph can you get that wouldn't normally be there? Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to butt in here now and just say one more thing, because and I didn't think of it till now, till you said it, when, you know, Cork City flooded the banks, whatever. I have this photograph that I'd say not many other people would have it now, right? Okay. Uh, Limerick Prison, right? It was right. during the really cold weather and they have this fountain uh, on the grounds of Limerick Prison just outside the main door, right? And it froze over while it was the wow. water was coming out. So it turns into this really mad, exquisite ice sculpture. And wow. it just, there's snow on the ground, there's ice all over this thing. It just, the scene is just unbelievable. But to get the photograph, I had to literally stick my camera through these metal bars. It's like I was trying to get into jail more than you know, to take the photograph. <laughs> and all these prison officers then walking by going, hi, 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 what are you doing, how are you doing? I just took the picture as fast as I could and ran off. You just know, but it was picture. really, really cool. Sorry, what's that? You said, I'm just taking a picture. Oh yeah, I yeah, take the picture, yeah. But mm. uh, nah, I know I know a few of them, so I would have gotten away with it anyway, regardless. But come here, I the general public are them. taking pictures with their iPhone anyway, so... Yeah, or that's true. Android or whatever they have. So. But, but it's a really know, cool it's, shot. Absolutely. And it's interesting you say there about, you know, ice and snow. I mean, that again is another situation. Like we're in January now. We always get our cold weather in January. Like if it's bad weather, I'd love to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to go down to Drumluska and get Drumluska mm. completely covered in snow. But you ha- you need a four-wheel drive to get down to that place in the best of times. Never yeah. mind say when it's going to be covered in snow and ice. But like these are the situations that you can get to because of weather conditions that you'll get totally unique shots. And if we do get snow and ice, I'd love to be able to go down to the likes of, say, Drumluska. And well, get, I'll tell you uh, so much. If we get snow again this year, I'm going to the cliffs some more because I've never gotten a shot at the cliffs with snow. There you go. I've gotten there you go. every other season, every other period of the world... Uh, uh, season and world and yeah I just have to get that shot with the snow because, and you know why because um, I have another job there as well that I deliver things and I often go to the Cliffs of Moher and I'll be inside the cliff the, the building and they have just one picture up in the wall and it's a crap picture but the scene no it's not a crap picture it's just there's not the quality isn't there to be much much better Okay. So it's a great picture, but it's just the quality isn't there. And it's got the O'Brien's Tower at the Cliffs of Moher covered in snow and all the ground and everything. And it's just, it looks amazing. So I want to try and recreate that and put my own twist on it. So yeah, I'm there if the snow is there. Yeah. And I think, look, you know, there's nothing nicer actually than seeing snow on the coast. I think it's just something which is mystical because you wouldn't normally mm. get snow along the coast. But when you do, no. it's like, oh yeah, that looks savage, you know. 
So yeah, yeah. And I mean that was that was my topic, Dermot. I think it's an interesting one for you and I to discuss. And I'd like to again, like I say, put it out to the listeners in regards to what are their thoughts, you know, what's their favourite conditions from a weather point of view that they've ever photographed in. And let's try and keep the topic going in the discussion on the Facebook group, yeah? Absolutely. I look forward to seeing, even if we could get the people to post maybe on the Sunday Showcase their uh, most uh, yeah. weatherful picture. I don't know, yeah. just a team maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, adverse weather. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, so guys, we're going to leave that topic to bed and uh, we can further the conversation on Facebook. It'll be absolutely great. So we're going to take a quick break and have a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of running out of power at that crucial moment? Do you need to charge two batteries simultaneously or charge on the go while in your car? The award-winning Pro Cube 2 from Hanel has got you covered. Available for Canon, Nikon, Sony and Panasonic. Visit Hanel.ie. And you're very welcome back to the Irish Photography Podcast. And now we're going to jump straight into our topic two today, and it's called Your Safe Place. And the reason why it got me thinking about your safe place, Darren, is where you feel comfortable. Where do you go just to relax, even if you don't even bring a camera, somewhere you can clear your mind. And if you do bring the camera, even better again. And that place for me would be Two Mile Gate. The reason Mm -hmm. I go there all the time is... First and foremost, it's close to my home. Secondly, I know the area inside out. And third of all, I did a vlog there on Friday, I think it was last Friday or Saturday, to uh, commemorate my first anniversary of my vlogiversary. Does that make sense? Okay. Vlogiversary. So. Vlogiversary, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I went back to the scene of the crime of my very first episode called The Pilot Vlog. So yeah, I just want to, re- not recreate it, but just go back there and kind of take a few pictures and maybe talk about a few things about my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I just love going back there. I've taken these shots 50 million, 100 times over, but I've only ever been truly happy with two shots from there. And now to look back at that other shot that I was truly happy about, it's fine. It's actually technically really nice, but I got one banger of a shot last, or this season, and it's going to be in my top 10, I reckon, for the, do you remember we did our photographer of the year, candidates and all that? Yes, so yes. Well, I'm going to start looking through that now and break down my top 10 photographs for 2019 this week and maybe do a video on YouTube about it. But um, yeah, so what do you may have you got a safe place that you go to? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's Rocky Bay, and it's somewhere that I've been going even before I had a camera, because I just love the whole area there. Um, but like the one thing, and I absolutely understand what you're saying there, you know, about going to Two Mile Gate, because you know the area like the back of your hand, you have gotten good shots there, and you do know that, okay, what the conditions, depending on what the conditions are, you know where to go in that area. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's a plethora of different photographs that you can get okay there's similarity because you got the jetties but you have a number of other things that you can do there as well with the reeds and such like that but for me with rocky bay what i love about it is i don't know how many times there but i've gone there i just feel comfortable the moment i go back there uh, i mean for me i feel very comfortable anyway at the coast i just love the sound of the waves i love the sound of the wind i love the whole motion of the water and i what i really love more so about seascape photography is that the uniqueness, like even discussed in the first topic, but the uniqueness of every single photograph. So you can have two people in the same place to get two different shots. Now, yeah. saying that, though, if you remember when you had Nick Page on, he mentioned about the photograph that we spoke with actually earlier with the big wave and his body was next to him and they both clicked the shutter <laughs> milliseconds away from each other. You can yeah. see minute differences, but that that's a, a one in, in a, I suppose, a million situation because, you know, okay, they were both looking for the wave in the same spot and they both took the photograph as they could see the wave building up. Mm. But when I go to Rocky Bay, I've never had exactly the same shot. I might have had a similar shot because the headland is the same. Sky is going to be different first and foremost. Light. The rocks, well, light, yeah, but the sky is going to be the difference in the top end. The rocks, you're going, I've gone and said, okay, I'm going to try and photograph the same rocks on a different time and then look different. Because you might have some green algae on it at one point, one time of the year. You might have no green algae at another time of the year. It might be wet. It when might be get, dry. <clears throat> exactly. It depends on where the water is, how far out the tide is. Is it coming in? Or is it coming out? Mm. And then you throw into the mix, like you quite rightly said, light. And the light then that you get there. I mean, I've been there and it's blown me away. I, there was one there that I'd done, um, one video that I did. And when I arrived, the, the light that on that day was just beautiful as it was. But when I arrived... All I could see was just like a fluorescent green. 
that was coming off the Class. Rocks. I love that. I absolutely It was beautiful. Love it. Absolutely beautiful. But then I, could, I go back the following day and it won't be the same. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And that's what I love about it. But because it's an area that I'm comfortable with, I can be creative. I can experiment. I don't really feel any under pressure because I know the place. I know where the generally where the rocks are. But again, here's the other point about Rocky Bay. And I presume it's the same for most beaches. You know, I mean, they call Rocky Bay Rocky Bay for a reason because it's very rocky. But <laughs> where it's where it's not rocky is where the sand will settle, so you get the sediment. But the sand moves. I went yeah. down there one day and all the sand was pretty much gone. Where? So all the sand had been in Rocky Bay. But where did it go, to it? Oh, it goes out. I mean, it's a, you can have heavy waves that are coming through and churning the whole that up, and then when the water goes out, it's getting pulled out. Mm. It comes back in again. I mean, it's not gone out too far, you know, but like... You can get totally different conditions. You can get a rock today that's going to be covered in sand tomorrow. Right. Okay. So let me ask you this. So how far is Rocky Bay from your your home? Uh, I would estimate around about 13 kilometers, I would say. Is that all? Thir- yeah, I would say so, yeah. I mean, like, I'm living in Glenmire and... Um, it's just on the other end of Carrigaline. It's not that far. It might be further, but I don't know. It, just, it feels mm. like nothing to me anyway. I never really so got it might take how far is it. Okay. 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get there? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes, I would say. Yeah, wow. well, a half hour tops, depending on traffic. I suppose it's something similar to myself. So in Two Mile Gate, it takes me 20 minutes to get there. Like it's And it's straight out the motorway. It, it's dead mm-hmm. easy if you got lost or something wrong with you. you know, how anyone can get lost in Ireland, I'll never know. You can't. Yeah. You'll always end up somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Just look for, yeah. The, near, just look for the nearest pub, and you you're fine. You're yeah. sorted. I don't. No, I just think of my wife now, and I yeah, she she get lost. Like she'd burn <laughs> water, you know. So <laughs> anyway, sorry, we digress there ever so slightly. We I digress there. Yeah. She's so I mean, me. look, it's only it's only a hop, skip, and a jump for me. And the thing I love about that then as well is that you know, I, if I get an opportunity to go take photos, I'm lucky. It's not a case that I, I can go anytime I want to go. Mm-hmm. But there'll be certain times there that I would look and see the light and I go, oh man, the conditions are unreal. Again, let's see if I can go. And I can manage to go very, very quickly while I see the light as it, what it is. Instead of me having to drive two and a half hours or, you know, do this or get a get a ferry or get a flight or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's close, but... The main reason, I suppose, as well, that I picked that as my safe place is because if I ever find that I'm falling out of a funk from photography, I mean, in the summertime, I, I actually made a video um, about it called Back to the Coast because I don't go f- taking photographs at the coast in the summer because it's just not enough wave action. Um, and sunrise and sunset aren't really at the most hospitable times, let's no, just say, in the summertime. Uh, um, so in the summertime, I find myself going off into woods and stuff like that and trying to hide from the light, really, and see mm. what I can do, I suppose, really, from there. But anyhow, um, I wanted to get back into seascape photography, and the first place that I went to was Rocky Bay. Mm. And tell me because this. Because I so. know that I'm going to get up there, you know. Okay, so I watched a video the other day. I think the girl's name is Kim Grant. She did a collaboration with Wadger Catcher. And yes, never I saw even, it. Never heard of the girl before in my life. And it, Hadn't you? No, no, it just came up in my news, uh, my news feed on YouTube, recommended. So I was like, right, I'm in the mood to find some new YouTube or something fresh, something that kind of I can relate to. And she asked a question that she loves the whole getting out and open and being in a safe place and enjoying nature and being there on her own and developing a picture creatively as possibly as she can and no one can make can maybe disturb it simply because of the stupid hours that we are awake so whether it be yes uh, sunrise in the morning in i don't know let's say uh, five six seven o'clock in the morning where the rest of the general public are usually tucked away up nice and safe in bed but us mm-hmm. no we're out in the land looking for that photograph and she begged the question and she asked adam do you ever get lonely on your mm-hmm. own in the landscape. So if you're a Rocky Bay, do you ever get lonely or do you prefer to be lonely or would you rather have myself there with you or someone or someone nearly as awesome as me? <laughs> That's the impossible answer you're looking for there, isn't it? Um, I mean, look, I do love getting out and I do love going to the coast by myself. I enjoy that because, like I said before, you know, for a lot of people as well, I think photography is therapeutic. But, Absolutely, I would agree with you. And again, we alluded to it when we spoke about what we've learned. 
collaboration and meeting up with people is phenomenal in every step of the way. I mean, even if you go to a location, in reality, like if you go to a location, if you and I go to Rocky Bay, we walked down to the slip onto the beach. We don't go stand and say, take the same photograph of the same rock. No. You're on the other side of the beach. But I do know that if I need you, and that's why I have the walkie talkies, mm-hmm. as you know, that I can talk to you or I can say, hang on, I need a help here or what do you think it is or check this out. Unless you're like Sav Adam Gibbs and Gavin Hardcastle where Adam will go, it won't tell you anything <laughs> and ask him, was it like... He'll oh, walk in and shot on oh. purpose. Like, <laughs> yeah, there was, not, no, there was nothing down there, nothing over there, no, no. But um, yeah, so, you know, you can go with company, you can still be alone, but it's t- like discussing the photography and taking the photos uh, that you've taken afterwards over a cup of tea or if you're there in the morning, on a, on a breakfast it's lovely you know and i think i really enjoy that aspect of it so like yeah do, do you get lonely of course you can get lonely but at the same point um it's good to be on your own as well at times you know mm. i have to not disagree with her she's every right to feel lonely if she if she ever does or whatever but i never do i've never felt lonely once in my life uh from a photography sense i've always felt comfortable in my surroundings i feel very comfortable in my own skin i don't need someone to entertain me don't don't get me wrong i love having people around i'm a very chatty person and i like to integrate with other people and pick people's brains not noses so you know i i i just love getting out and open whether it be with someone or or not it, it doesn't appeal to me if someone's not there i've never not once felt lonely but i can understand how someone would you know maybe after a while you know i've been on their own out in the open because it is hard to get someone to go with you at five o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning you and i have been to locations where we've left the night before at two o'clock in the morning just to get a sunrise Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. like our wives will be wondering jesus christ in the lord's name what are they doing up at this hour in the morning like but we love it like mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. Myself and John Myler have been up at the cliffs of Moher f- looking for the the belly of the Milky Way at half three. Holding in the hands, morning. by the way. Holding and hands, mind you. The holding hands, <laughs> holding hands, watching True the stars. True story. It's it's unbelievable. But like, would I be there on my own? Absolutely no problem. I love it. I love just getting in the outdoors and free my mind, and just whether I get a picture or not, it doesn't really matter anymore. It probably would have in the past. So I love just getting out and just being me. And I think it's just to get away from my children. <laughs> Come here, hang on a second. What about the time when you were being chased by that bull? Ah, oh, now that was different. That was oh, totally Hang on a second. I bet you felt lonely then, didn't you? I was terrified. I wasn't lonely. <laughs> exactly. I was terrified. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going home in a body bag. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You were lonely then, weren't you? N- uh, whatever yeah moving on <laughs> yes you were yes you were but uh, uh, anyway right so if you think about your 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 safe place right that you go to in Kilke or not Kilke Kilin. in Tumalge Tum- yeah, Tumalge what do you like most about that and why does it make you feel safe let's just say Um, I think it's simply because I've been going there a long long time since as a child my father used to bring out bring me out there and he'd teach me how to use a kayak so I've been using okay. kayaks for donkey's years. Ever since I'm a child, I learned how to canoe out there, kayak. Uh, I, when I got my first wetsuit, my father brought me out there. And like, my my father loves the water more than I. He's the one who got me into scuba diving and fishing and all these things. Anything to do with water, my father got me into. And so I have very, very fond memories of Killaloo in Two Mile Gate as a child, growing the whole way up. And it's then... Even when myself and my father didn't kind of hang out with each other when you get to a certain stage in your life, you don't really pat around mm-hmm. your dad, uh, maybe when you're 16 or 17 or 18, whatever. But then uh, when I was a young 20-year-old, I had a jet ski, and then we'd go out and jet skis out in Two Mile Gate, so that would further our experience, our entertainment value for the summer. And we'd be out there nearly every day on jet skis, having great crack and not wrecking the place, but just really enjoying life. And then Gosh. we got away from that and, you know, like even myself and my mates, when we were, again, young 20-year-olds, we'd be messing and be hanging out with these girls, you know, just trying to court a young one, you know, and <laughs> you'll be out and kill you, like, yeah. two mile gate again. And like, do you ever hear this game called Marco Polo? No. 
Right, so Marco Polo is, uh, you have to say, you get three Marcos, right? So if you say Marco, then the person, it's like hide and seek. You have to say Polo, right? So we okay. would uh, group up, like we are 20 something, Rose, and we're out in Two Mile Gate at like two o'clock in the morning, just arsing about doing nothing. Now, we, were no, yes. we weren't up to no good, we were just having fun. And it was pitch yeah, dark, yeah, and we'd go down into that forest and we'd play Marco Polo. And it was just so much fun. And like, I remember a, a mate of mine, I won't say his full name, I'll just say his first name, Alec. He had the best hiding spot I have ever known in my life. He became one with a bush and we couldn't find him for 45 minutes. And eventually wow. he just broke his whole laughing, literally standing underneath my feet. And it was just the best thing ever. But it just brings wow. back so many good memories to me. Uh, so I've become one at the area, really, in, in, in a cliched sense. But I just, I just love it. I feel free there. I can, I know where everything is. I know where the certain shots are. Uh, I, one thing I would say is I think it needs to be a bit better looked after. I think the ground staff are doing not a very good job in maintaining the area. Like some of the trees are uh, overgrown into some of the areas where they shouldn't be. Uh, some of the weather then has knocked down some of the trees and they haven't been taken away so it's very very messy at times I just think the groundsman could do maybe a slightly better job now I've never lodged a complaint or, or anything like that but I think it's something that the Clare County Council could really kind of maybe spend a few pounds on it kind of looking after and kind of cleaning up this place a small bit because the other area where the ducks and the pier and everything looks lovely it's gorgeous but they just they're fixated on that area but over here on the right hand side where the most beautiful area it is they, they just just left it it's like I don't know overgrown with everything and crap so I think you just need to do a bit of a, a better job and even in my vlog I say it that like I can't even take a photograph here because of these pro protruding kind of branches these trees that when, yes. like you go back two three years ago they weren't there and they're overgrown into this whole area you know so yeah, even if you're just, even if you're not to take a photo, if you want to go out and walk, you have to walk up into the jetty, you have to duck down around and then go out, you know, so, I don't know. Oh yeah, from the leaves of the trees that are growing on the top of it. Yeah, 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 so it's a bit of a nuisance, so, and the moss is growing over onto the jetties as well. Now, that it helps for nice photographs, but it's treacherous it makes to it slippy. people who want to go out and kind of relax. You know, so I just think... Yeah, it must be slippy, I suppose, to be able to walk across it as well, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I nearly hopped myself the other day. Uh, just Get it on video? No, thank God. But whoa, whoa, whoa. I have one uh, clip on the video. Uh, you have to tune in and watch it now because it's my vlogiversary plus uh, 2019 show reel. So I have uh, a few clips of me throughout the year. And when I went out to Clare Glens with Dave Kai Piper, which I haven't released that vlog yet either... I'm saving that for the end of this month or whatever. <laughs> I nearly hopped off the ground <laughs> and I did catch that on video, but I caught myself. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I sent it I sent it on to you the day it happened and I you, yes. you could hear me laughing funny in as the hell. background. It's just it's very good. But you could actually yeah, see tune on, on and watch Dave's that face. Video. Dave's face actually said it all. He thought like, oh, oh God, he's gone. <laughs> Yeah, it's very good. Watch the video, watch it. You'll like it, I promise. Yeah, watch it, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've seen it and I think it's really, really good and fair play to you. You put a very good video together. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Now, even with your show read as well of what you've done too. And, you know, for you to go back to get into your safe place to make your vlogiversary is quite fitting, as you say, because it started off there in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. But, uh, Right, have you any final thoughts for today's episode, Darren? I know it's not exactly the longest two ones of episodes, but, well, that's it, really. <laughs> well, I've got a couple of final thoughts, I suppose, really. I mean, look, again, you know, like like the first part, you know, to our listeners, like, where, where is your safe place? What are your thoughts in regards to being lonely in the landscape? Actually, that could be the name of a book. Or a photo album, Lonely in the Landscape. Um, but, you know, what are your thoughts in regards to that? And if you, you know, want to join the group, you already joined the group, head on over to Facebook, search for the Irish Photography Podcast, name uh, any of the guests uh, or any of the hosts that we've had on the podcast, and off you go and you can come in and join the fantastic community that is really, really bubbling uh, in that group as well. It's really fantastic, as you know, Dermot, you see it each week when we look at the Sunday Showcase or the Sunday Showcase. I've actually taken to writing that as well now in the description. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, so you know, jo- jump onto the Facebook group and start, you know, join in the conversation. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, someone named the host the other day and spelled uh, Dear Mood as my name. <laughs> so thank you to whoever wrote that. So I just I just clicked approve when I saw them and oh my god. It was kind of funny reading it out. <clears throat> I thought mm. it was like Scott Kelby because I remember Scott Kelby pronouncing my name like, nearly the exact same way. Dr. Mood on the grid before it was a, it was kind of funny. Americans DR cannot Mood. pronounce my name. No, I mean I actually you know I find it myself even close to home because my wife's from the states and she says my name Darren. Does my she? Kids can't, yeah, my kids say Darren. I say my name isn't Darren. My name is Darren, and then they keep correcting my wife and say his name is Darren, not Darren. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And I, and I, the final thing I suppose really I'd like to just to uh, say is uh, thanks to everybody who entered into the IPP Photographer of the Year contest 2019. It was phenomenal the entries that we would have had. We should hope to be able to get a vlog done and. We should hope to be able to get a podcast done, sorry, mm. uh, in regards to the discussion about the actual uh, contest at some stage. But myself and Dearman are going to be off to uh, Lefoten. Am I going to Lefoten? Damn it, I'm are not you okay, going to Lefoten. I'm you still didn't... wishing I was going to Lefoten. That'll, t- that'll tell you how much I missed that trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're off to the Dolomites there next week, so we'll be recording a podcast from the Dolomites. But yeah, you know, just in regards to the, to the contest, we'll hopefully get one um, on air soon to discuss the contest itself yeah yeah thank you very much for everyone tuning in and thank you very much for entering the competition and congratulations to sebastian who won the overall competition so i'm really looking forward to the show reel that uh, darren is going to put together maybe i'm putting you on the spot by saying you're going to do it <laughs> i am going to do it but it's the okay. time to find to get it to do yeah. it before everything else you know yeah, so yeah. it will it will happen but you know again bear in mind lads this is not what we do mm. uh, you know as our livings unfortunately you know job and family get in the way i mean if right. i could put the other ones first and drop everything you'd have a show reel right away but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. feck our family who i don't even like yeah. my own family so it's grand i love mine yeah you're one in a million you are all right so guys thank you very much for tuning in to the irish photography podcast today i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed us uh, watching us on youtube now which is a new addition whether it it will probably won't be up every week but we're going to try our best uh, at, no, at, at that hand and that side of things you can download us on spotify itunes or wherever you catch your podcaster and we look forward to speaking with you next week again all right guys thank you very much for tuning in ayo Stronger fall, everybody. Thanks for listening. Hey, guys. If you dig what you're hearing, why don't you jump over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a five-star rating, and don't forget to share with your friends. With all that done, we'll see you next week. And remember, keep shooting.